Father God, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you are extremely desirous of showing us what it means to be the sons of God. So, Father, we just thank you that we are going to learn from you tonight. We're going to learn things that will cause change in the earth. Because, Lord, one of the things that we're learning about prayer is that it changes the earth. But, Lord, we have to be changed to bring that change. And so, Lord, we say, bring it to us. In Jesus' name, amen. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of truth. So we've been learning that our purpose in prayer is to know the will of God and to make it known. And uh, so you, you see in, in your notes there that I have uh, Revelation 1.10, and that's out of the Amplified Version in your notes. And it reads this way. It says, I was in the Spirit, wrapped in His power. That means to be overwhelmed. It's not like just a, ooh, that was neat. You're, you're undone. If you don't know what that means, to be undone in the Spirit, that means you're out. He's, I mean, you just, you don't have anything going on. It's all about what He's doing. Amen? Overwhelmed in His power on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a great voice like the calling of a war trumpet. So, uh, the revelation that was given to Paul, or Paul to John, uh, is a word we're going to look at later on in this message, but uh, it comes from the Greek word apocalypsis. And we translate it as revelation. We also translate it as manifestation and a few other words. So, Paul, so John is having this revelation of, of Jesus, and it's Sunday. He said it's the Lord's Day. Sunday, the Lord's Day. Not Saturday, Sunday. Sunday's the Lord's Day. Amen. Some people try to say it's Saturday. No, it's not. It's Sunday, it's the Lord's Day, and John's having church. Now, whether he's having church by himself or with other folks, we don't know, but he's having church. And, 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 and he's having church in such a way that God just overwhelms him and overpowers him. And all of a sudden, he's just, uh, he's being caught up, spiritually speaking, because he doesn't say anything about going into heaven. Uh, he doesn't say he didn't either, though. But he's, he's caught up in the presence of God in such a powerful way. And I want to show you that why I say I don't, we don't know whether he, he took off or he was still here. If you go to Acts chapter 10. In verse 10. See, what, you don't have to go to heaven to be overwhelmed by the presence of God, obviously. And when you're overwhelmed, you don't, sometimes you don't even know where you're at. It says in uh, verse 10, it says, And he, he was very hungry. This is, talking, this is Peter. He was very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and, and saw heaven opened. And a certain vessel descending down to him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, let down to the earth. So, so Peter's on this rooftop, and he's, and he's having a manifestation of the Spirit. And he wasn't looking to have this, although he had been fasting and praying. And when you, and when you put yourself in that situation, the manifestations of the Spirit are way more likely to appear. Don't fast and pray so you can have a manifestation, 
but fast and pray so you can be in the presence of God. If he wants to do some special thing, awesome. But don't do it for that reason. Do it because you want to be in his presence. Because it's all about him, not the manifestation. Amen? So he, he's praying and this thing happens. And, and uh, so we know Peter, he's up on top of the roof and with the, when this goes on. And he never left the earth. Because if you keep on reading down through there, you, you'll see that when, when the vision disappears, Peter's still on the roof. He didn't go anywhere. It's just that the earth disappeared around him. Amen. So, so let's look at this again. It says, I was in the spirit wrapped in his power on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a great voice like the calling of a war trumpet. And we hear that trumpet if we're paying attention. It's getting louder. It's very interesting on the way to church that Rowena and I were talking and she was saying there was three different kinds of wars and I said, no, there's four. The last one, the one I brought up was there's a war against the church. There has been an increase of people being killed around the earth in these last few years that we haven't seen before. And, even, and it's even coming into this nation where, you know, the, where, where heathen people are standing up and saying, we don't want to cross there. Or we don't want, we don't want you guys, we don't want the church to have a say. You just need to shut up. We will not. Amen. We will not be silent. We will not be quiet. That doesn't mean we have to be obnoxious, but we are not going to just back down because somebody tells us we sh they think we ought to. Amen. Amen. So, so, you know, we, you need to understand when the church was born, the whole world was against the church. You know, they weren't brought into nice and pleasant and nobody wanted the church to show up. When it showed up, it surprised everybody and they didn't want it. Yeah, messed up their deal. And they were, what are we going to do with all this? And, and the church, in spite of that, the church pushed forward. In the last days... Jesus said about the last days when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith upon the earth? I say, yes, he will. But there's, there is a returning happening to the body of Christ in these days where we are going to rise up such as maybe we haven't done for centuries. Because we have to. Or the majority of the earth is going to fall off into hell. And we can't allow that to happen. So, uh, in, it would say, well, what's that got to do with praying in the Spirit? It's about being in the Spirit. Okay? Being in the Spirit and praying in the Spirit are not necessarily the same thing, but the combination of the two will always bring power into manifestation. Being in the Spirit and praying in the Spirit. You can pray in the Spirit and really there ain't much going on. Have you ever had that experience? You, you know, you're, you're speaking, you're, you're, you're using your prayer language and all that, but there ain't much going on. Are you really in the spirit? No, you're just praying. Okay? You're just praying. People, you can pray in English and get in the spirit more than you can in tongues sometimes. Amen. The important thing is in prayer that we are being led of the Spirit of God so that He can manifest the will of God through us. It's not an exercise just because, well, you know, this is something that will kind of help out or I'm going to pray for a little bit or something, you know, I want to feel better, whatever. No, the whole purpose in prayer is so that God can show up. And He wants to show up in power. So look at this. Go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So you see the divisions, the points of the, the message tonight, making power, changing lives, presenting Jesus. That's what we're about. Making power, changing lives, presenting Jesus. So in 1 Corinthians 14, if you, you know, if you've studied 
1 Corinthians, you know that 12, 13, and 14 have to do with the manifestations of the Spirit of God or manifestations of power and how we operate in them. And in verse, 20, or verse 12, it says, Even so ye, for as much as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, and if you read in the King James Version of the Bible, you'll notice that the word gifts is italicized, meaning that it was not there in the original language. So, so if you were to read it as it was originally written in the Greek language, he, he, was, he said it this way, Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spirituals, or you could say it this way, spiritual things, kind of gives it a little more light, of spirituals, or spiritual things, seek, it, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. So what, so what Paul is telling the church is, we don't seek his power for power's sake, but we seek the power of God, the, manifest, the manifestations, because manifestations always have power. Say that. Manifestations always have power. So we don't seek it for power's sake, but for the edifying or the building up or the strengthening or the, or the bringing along of the church. So, so we don't seek the manifestations, but we do want the gifts to be operating. You understand what I'm saying? The, the number one thing is always Jesus, right? The number one thing is always Jesus, but we need that power that he operated in it, if, we, if we're going to present Jesus to the world and show Jesus to the world, are we really representing him if we don't demonstrate his power? I don't believe so. And you, you know, and you notice this too, that people that get saved, if they don't get saved with demonstration of power going on, they're usually reluctant to enter into that. They don't want it. Because they have mostly a mental agreement to things. I'm not saying they're not born again, but they have mostly a mental agreement to, th to the things of God. They're not looking for something to manifest. They just want to make it into heaven, and they want other people to do so too, which is great and wonderful. But people need help. Amen? So we make power available when we're in the Spirit. You know, I haven't said this in a while, you shouldn't come to church to get charged up. You should be charged up when you get here so the rest of us can benefit. Too often it's the other way around. Well, I hope maybe the pastor got something today. You got the same Jesus I do. Amen. You got the same Holy Ghost that I do. And he's the one that generates the power in you, not me. Hallelujah. So, but what's this power for? The power that we, are, that we need is the power to change people and the arena around us. Because you can't do it by having a wonderful conversation. Or playing nice or whatever it is you want to do just by saying something. You've got to be able to show people something. So look at this. You know, we're supposed to follow after Jesus, right? And Jesus is our model. Say, Jesus is my model. Jesus is my model. So in Luke chapter 4, let's take a look at this. In verse 14, it says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. You know, Jesus didn't preach anything until he returned in power. Let me say that again. Jesus never preached a sermon in his life until he came back in power. Never prayed for anybody in his life in terms of manifesting miracles and all that. We don't know whether he prayed for people or not before that. But the demonstration of power never showed up until he came back in power. Nothing ever happened to Jesus until he went down to be baptized of John when he came out of the water and the Spirit of God came upon him and then imbued him with power. To be, to be imbued means to be infused or it just, it, it just 
permeates your being. And then when he went out into the wilderness to defeat the, to, to defeat the devil, then he returned in greater power. And then he began to preach, and then he began to teach, and then he began to lay hands on the sick, and then the miracles began to occur, but not before, never before. And Jesus told the church, don't get out there and try to do anything until he comes on you. But we didn't listen too good, talking about the church in general. There was a whole lot of the church that just completely ignored Jesus in that arena. We're not that church. We are not that church. Say, we are not that church. We are not that church. Amen. So, it says that he returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. Well, no wonder. You show up in power, people will start talking. As long as there's not much of anything going on, what are they going to say? Huh, well, nice speech. Look at verse 32. Well, he didn't give nice speeches. It says that they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was, was with power. You remember when, they, when things were getting towards the end of Jesus' ministry, and they sent the palace guards, I mean, not the palace guards, but the... the, uh, the uh, the, the, the guards that worked in the Sanhedrin, the, the, uh, for the Sanhedrin, they sent them out to, to uh, go get Jesus. You know, you go arrest him. We're going to do him in. And they went out there and Jesus was preaching. And he was preaching so powerfully they forgot what they went out there to do. And then they went back to the, you know, to the religious bosses and they said, where's Jesus? And they said, we never heard anybody speak like that before. He doesn't talk like you guys. <laughs> uh huh. I can't wait to get to heaven and hear Jesus preach. Is he going to preach in heaven? Oh, you bet he is. Oh, hallelujah. That is going to be wonderful. And now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So Jesus, Jesus is our model. So this, this is how Paul defined that. 1 Corinthians 2, 5 says, That your faith should stand, should not stand, in wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Faith does not originate in the natural. Did you hear me? Faith does not originate in the natural. Faith originates in the Spirit. And then, if you open yourself up to Him, that passes into your spirit, and power becomes available to you. But until we yield ourselves to Him, and we yield ourselves to the Word of God, the power of faith does not work in our lives. That's why you can agree in your head and nothing happens. Did you hear me? A lot of times we think, what's going on? You know, I, 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 you know, I believe this. What are you saying you agree? You're not saying, you're not really believing anything. Believing, faith, there's no difference, right? Believing or faith always comes out of your spirit. Isn't it interesting that your spirit is hooked to your vocal cords? Out of the abundance of the heart, the innermost being, right? Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, out of the innermost being, the mouth speaks. So it doesn't originate in the natural, it originates in the spirit, and then it gets into your spirit, and when it gets into your spirit, your mouth will speak. Whatever mostly comes out of your mouth, you know what's in your heart. Some of you are going, uh-oh. I need to fix this. Yeah, fix it. 
When power is available, people change. And I'm not talking about the I'm not talking about you and me in our moment of time. I'm talking about people around us. When power is available, people can change. When the power is not available, they can't. Only God can do those things. And God is depending upon his sons to reveal him. He is revealed through your spirit and it comes out of your mouth. And when it comes out in the power of the spirit, people can change. As we imitate Jesus, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're Jesus imitators, right? Christians, Christ-like. Actually, you know, Christ-like means anointed-like. Christ means anointed, right? It's not his last name. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you know, the first name, no, it's not his last name. It mean, Jesus, Messiah, really, literally what his name means, the, means the anointed Savior. So if we're like him, Christ-like, then we're anointed like him. So as we imitate him, as we imitate Jesus, he sends his power to us by his spirit. And as he sends his power to us by his spirit, we, then we are able to help people by faith. Sympathy never helped anybody. Makes them feel good, but it doesn't help them. Amen. So, so we need to let this thing be flowing out of us. When power is available, people can change. One night I was preaching and as I approached the platform and I was already kind of woozy. You know, I was, I was, I was wrapped in the spirit before I ever got up to the front of the church. I mean, we, we were in our worship time and I'd spent some time praying before that and I could sense that God was going to do something, but you know, a lot of times God's going to do something you don't know what. Just keep moving. This is what people do. They know God's going to do something they start backpedaling. Well, I don't know. You know, that's the time to move forward, not backwards. Amen. And, and I walked up, I started to walk up to the platform and 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 I could sense the power of God just descending upon me in, in just a, I mean, and normally I would walk around this side of the platform. As, you know, we always sat on that side. I don't know why, but you know, I'd normally come around this side. But for some reason, I think I staggered, but I don't remember. I, yes, I did. I staggered, so I, I didn't make it over to this side. I made it to this side. And, and the power of God was so strong on me, I just grabbed a hold of it. And I was just like this. And then I preached for about a half an hour. Kind of just hanging on to the thing. Loud and hard. Didn't have no notes. Never made it that far. For about a half an hour, the power of God was upon me. And, and then all of a sudden, this little girl got up and she wanted to go to the bathroom. And she did something really unusual. She got up. We had three sections. We had, we had left, middle, and right. And she got up in the middle section and she come up and she come up the aisle. I don't know why she did it this way other than I think God was just trying to get my attention. She come up and she come up the middle aisle and she comes across, and she comes across the front and I'm hanging on and I'm thinking, what is she doing? I'm still preaching, but you know, I, you know even though you're, this is going on, see, because it's coming out of my spirit. It ain't coming out of my head. If it's going to come out of my head, I got to have notes. And I'm preaching away and she comes across there and she kind of waved at somebody and I'm like, what? And then turn and went down the aisle and she gets into the back, she gets to the back of the church and there's a lady sitting back there and, and she said something about, you know, where's the bathroom or something like that because I'd never seen her before. She was, I don't know, a relative of somebody or something. This is on a Wednesday night. And the lady said, Oh, it's back there, honey, and you just go. And all of a sudden, I, I wasn't overwhelmed, you know, hanging on to this thing no more. I stood up and I said, who told you you could tell her to go to the bathroom? And she, ah! 
I said, nobody told you you could do that. You can't interrupt my service like that. Now, I'm not thinking. This is coming out of here. Okay, if you're just upset, that's different. But this is coming out of here. And I said, little girl, you come up here, and I want all the children, because we never did release the children, didn't have the chance, you know, because I walked up there and bam. So there was about 15 children, something like that. 15, 18, I don't remember. And I said, I want them all to come up here, line them up here in the front. I want them to come up here right now. Like that. Get up here. And they, you know, parents <laughs> And they come up, and I said, just line them up here. You know, well, we didn't have to do all that. Our archers were trained real good, and they line them all up. We're going to get there. And, and so I went, I started down on this side, and I, I didn't even pray over them from the standpoint, you know, be filled. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I'm just praying in tongues, and I just touch them, boom. And they'd fall out speaking in tongues. Touch my head, boom, brrr, on the way down. Every single one of them got filled instantly. Bang. That's what in the Spirit will do. Go to Acts chapter 10, please. You know, we say we are warriors for Christ. What does that mean? That doesn't mean we're supposed to go out with our machine guns and fight a battle. And that doesn't mean we pray against heavenly things. If that was true, then why didn't Jesus do it? You know, sometimes people say, well, I'm going to send the devil to hell. You can't. You don't have the right to. If you did, Jesus would have done it, and he didn't do it. Amen. Amen. Acts 10, 38, this is a very common scripture, but I want you to see something. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. You can be anointed and have no power. What do you mean? We're all anointed. Isn't that right? We're all anointed. Do we all have power? We all have the Holy Spirit, but do we all have power? Nope. Not until we get there. Okay. How God anointed Jesus with Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So we have the power to change lives because God is with us. We are the body of Christ, right? So God is with us. So you notice here it says that, that he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. What is oppression? This is what people think most of the time. What's the goofy way that people act or, or, or whatever condition they're in? All, that's not oppression. That's what you see because oppression has taken place. Did you hear me? That's what you see because oppression has taken place. Now they are, they are in the condition of being oppressed, but the condition happened somewhere back here in the past. When you see them, you know, in, in some kind of physical condition that's not good, or you see them in a way that, you know, they don't, understand God and stuff like that. When you see these kinds of things, the oppression has already taken place. How many of you understand this? Before you knew Jesus, you were oppressed. That doesn't mean you were sick or anything like that. That means you, you were under the devil's control. Don't like that idea. Too bad. He's the God of this world. You were. So was I. Amen. Until you give your life to Jesus, you're oppressed. Okay? So oppression is this. Oppression is the inability to hear, 
see and understand the things of God. The inability to hear, see, and understand the things of God. You're oppressed. You won't get any help from God when you're that way. Okay? So, Matthew 13, 15 reads, I have it for, in your notes there, it says, their minds are dull and slow to perceive. This is Jesus quoting out of the Old Testament. Their ears are plugged and hard of hearing, and they deliberately shut their eyes to the truth. Otherwise, if they weren't oppressed, otherwise they would open their eyes to see and open their ears to hear. Did you know you can open your ears? We all know we can open our eyes. Did you know you can open your ears? Whenever you're, whenever you're talking to somebody about Jesus and they don't want to hear it, their, eyes, their ears are shut. And open their ears to hear and open their minds to understand. You know, as the expression goes, they're closed-minded. Okay? Usually people use it in a way away from God. You know, Christians are closed-minded. People say that all the time. No, our minds are just not a sieve. Amen. And open their minds to understand... Now watch this, and I use this particular translation because of the way it's worded. If they would, otherwise they'd open their eyes to see and open their ears to hear and open their minds to understand, then, if they did those three things, then they would turn to me and let me instantly heal them. Well, he'd just do it if he wants to. No. He said... They'll let me. So if they're not, if they are not seeing and hearing and understanding, they won't let him. And if we see and hear and understand, then he will instantly heal us. There ain't no long process. So what is, well, it's, it's not working for me. Something gummed up. You're either not seeing, or not hearing, or not understanding. Because Jesus said, if you, if you do those three things, I'll, and you let me, I'll instantly heal you. Isn't that what he said? If we get those things going in us, then he will, and we let him. What do you mean, let him? He ain't here. Yes, he is. The Bible says whenever two or more are gathered in his name, I am there. When you, whenever you come forward to have hands laid on you, is Jesus there? Absolutely. Well, nothing happened. You didn't let him. 